Uh, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Neil. Just letting people join the call. So I'm going to ask um, Carrie, I think Anne, Mary, if you could have the presentations ready to share when the time comes, um, that will be good. Neil, um, my can't my video is not linking. Uh, your pictures there, whether. It, that's can, just a, yeah, that's a picture. But when I say start video, it's got a. It's saying, "Can it fail to start video cameras? Please select another video." Yeah, well, I, I'll share it then. Okay. Okay. Um, if we have to. Sorry, I'm trying to. Make oh, it. and. Um, I see. I see Peggy there. Good. <laughs> Um, still quite a few people. Well, I might not be able to see what you share on your screen because all I'm able to well, see. Well, you're just going to talk to the highlights anyway, so you'll you'll have to tell me which page you want to be on. Yeah, I'll just tell you the slide number. Okay. At least I got my internet to reboot. Um, is it? Um, oh. I can't answer, Jane. And Neil, this is Anne. You may need to share mine as well. Okay. I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Let's see. Um, who isn't here? Uh, we don't, I don't see Jason. Um, there's Ren, Ralph, McKinsey, Nancy, me. Who else isn't on? Looks like we're missing Marcus. Oh, yeah, Marcus. Yeah. And uh, Nicole's going to be doing minutes tonight. I don't see her on, but uh, since this is recorded, it's not uh, absolutely vital that she's on. Okay. Um, I I have I don't know why it always happens. I have about a thousand people calling and texting me, but I'm trying to ignore them unless the, the people are trying to get on this call um, adds to the excitement. Um, well, so. It, it is six o'clock. Oh, okay. Marcus is there. Marcus is Anna. Okay. Um, so, Becca, if you could just do a roll call. Uh, Neil Minch. I'm here. Nancy Wilson. Here. Ralph Rutten. I uh, saw him. I see him. Oh, he's on? You see me? He's on mute. Here okay. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, there you are, right there. Uh, Kenzie Watts. Here. Uh, Marcus Medina. Here. Here. Ren Almitra. Here. Jason Wells. I sent him, him a text. Um, okay, so approval of agenda i think uh, out of you know respect for our guests i'd like to move approval of 
minutes and reports to be after the tier one presentations. Um, so with those two changes, uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So move. Second. Okay, any other comments? Okay, all those in, in favor, I guess we can raise our hands at this point. I think I can see everyone. Raise your hands. So that's six of us. All right, good. Um, so I am going to do public comments not on the agenda in case there are any. Um, and there are. Okay, so tier one presentation. So as I had uh, communicated, we're going to, I will literally use a stopwatch. Um, and I'm trying to keep it to 10 minutes each. And as I put in my email last last week, we want about two or three minutes for the applicant to just touch on the highlights or the points that you want this board to remember. But there's not time to go over the whole presentation and we've all already read them. Then the remainder of, of the time will be for a, any questions from the board to each of the five tier ones. And, you know, I'll be flexible on, on, on the questioning time. If we need to go over, we will. But I really want to try and keep that initial presentation to the absolute highlights of two or three minutes each. So I am going to, oh, I didn't open it. Um, I'm going to, and the, the sequence will be the Heritage Centre, the MAC, Miramont, uh, Carnegie, and then Hi Hiawatha Gardens, okay? Um, and, I, and Kerry, I'm sorry, I thought I actually had opened this, but I didn't. Well, since, since my uh, computer's failing me today, I appreciate you uh, managing the presentation for me. Yeah, so let me just get, um, I'm going to turn the stopwatch on, and obviously I will not be participating in this first one because of my conflict of interest. Um, but as, as we discussed in an earlier meeting, if a question is asked that I can maybe add clarity to in the answer, I'll do that. Um, but I, I will be keeping quiet during the Heritage Center. Um, so Kerry, I've opened it at, at, page, at page one. Okay, thanks, Neil. Um, can everybody hear me? Just make sure my sound's working. Yes. Okay. I appreciate it, you having me today. Um, my name is Carrie Storm. I'm a board member of the Heritage Center, and I have been a board member for approximately six years. Um, I'm also the board secretary. Since everyone's seen this before, next slide. <laughs> Our mission, next slide. What we do, next slide. I just wanted to touch on our accomplishments. This is a slide that we presented last year. And what I've done is highlight in green what the Heritage Center has been able to accomplish of what we presented for our goals last year. So as you can see by the field of green, we've been, we were very successful in accomplishing almost all of the goals that we presented to you all last year. Um, Lots of accomplishments. If you've been in to see the 150th anniversary exhibit, you've probably heard about the Pikes Peak Pusher event. We um, co-sponsored the creation of the Lou Archer Research Room, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide. So this is my what we're most excited about. So what, one of the things that we we're really excited about is last year we were able to uh, pay off our mortgage. So we now own our historical building free and clear. Um, we also were able to partner with UCCS, the Department of History and Museum Studies, and we created a work study pipeline where we have um, students coming in and working in the Heritage Center. These students, it was, I'll, I'll be honest, it was a lot of fun to have that energy and 
enthusiasm about one, people coming in and learning about Manitou, but also the things that the students came up with to do and present at the Heritage Center from the puppet shows to window displays to research. I mean, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, another thing, we were able to open the museum this last year over the summer, six days a week and five days a week in the off season. That has been huge for us to get more people in and exposed to the heritage of Manitou. And we're also driving new visitors in. We've increased our visitorship by 50% over last year. Next slide. These are our objectives for 2023. Um, one of the things we're really excited about is doing a Rocky perspective in partnership with the uh, Rocky Museum. We're going to continue to do, do what we do best from our oral history series that we started to improving our building and um, our facilities. That's one of our focuses. Next slide. For 2023, um, we're gonna use the match funds to help support our work study program. We do pay for approximately half of the payroll for our work study students. So we're gonna use the match monies for that. Um, we have an old building. Um, we have an HVAC replacement needed. Our air conditioning broke and that's 20K will go towards that. And the balance of the monies are going to be used for our exterior refurbishment. Uh, this year, we're getting new windows, we're getting new stucco, um, and we're going to essentially make the exterior of the building hopefully watertight and, and able to protect our um, exhibits and all of our good history that we maintain there. Next slide. Here's our budget. 2023, what we're looking at spending for operating capital in total. Next slide. Um, our three-year goals, which we are working toward, which is making our building safe and attractive. Actually, we've done a good job of that. Um, making our collections and artifacts more and easily accessible. We're doing that through our um, putting our archives online, the adequate staffing. <laughs> we're killing it with the UCCS program. Our outreach, we continue to K-12 students and educators. And also, you know, we're just looking for programs that enhance everybody's knowledge of Manitou. Next slide. We're an equal opportunity employer and organization. Questions? Um, and since I can't see everyone, if you have a question, just ask it, okay? Sure, I'm just wondering, do, do you think your your partnership with UCCS um, it will go on? Do you see any danger of that going away? I know when I was in a few times this summer, it, the place was being manned by one of your interns, which was wonderful. But uh, actually, I think that the UCCS is really looking at this as a good opportunity to put their students in the field and to get them exposure to actual museums and. We're such a little museum that it gives us them an opportunity to do, wear a bunch of different hats, whether they're researching an exhibit or putting the exhibit together to hands on. This is what we do to build an exhibit. So I think they really see it as an exciting pipeline for them. Great. Thank you. Ralph? Um, I, when you made the reference to uh, exterior refurbishment, was, is that more preventive or have you had problems? Uh, it, it, it's, it's, we've had problems. We've got, we had things leaking windows. I mean, if you look at, when you look at the side of our building, you see there's like a glass block window facing the, um, the laundry man. <laughs> That's actually plastic block. Um, wow. the thing, all our windows are going to be replaced with um, double plant paned, authentic for the period windows to keep the weather out, the stucco, is cracked. We're removing vents that don't go anywhere and, and seal the building so it keeps the weather out. Yeah, it's more actual. We're dealing with issues and preventative. Thank you. Yeah, an answer I've been giving people is when people ask, where are you? We normally say we're next to the laundromat. 
um, because that's the landmark. Um, we're expecting after this stucco is done that the building will be highly visible and will be its own own landmark. It's going to be Manitou blue, so it's going to be a, a beautiful blue that will stand out. It, and then as we in the future, we have a goal to put a mural on the side facing the uh, laundromat and it'll be a historic base. It's going to be awesome when we get to the final part of that. Did I hear that uh, the garage door may go away? On the front? Uh, in the front? Yes, that that will be it. That's not this year. But eventually the goal is to replace that roll up door with something more weather tight and to redo that front entrance to be a more welcoming. We, we, we've got to keep it historic though. So we're, we're trying to work through what the right fit is. Yeah, we actually have plans that are approved uh, for that. And going back to the 1940s, the doors were actually ones that opened left to right, like sliding doors. doors. Yeah. And so, and so that is what they will will be when we take out the garage door. I, for one, look forward to that because if I ever come in there and have to lift that door, it's hard. Anything else? We have about a, a minute left. <clears throat> Okay, Kerry, thank you. Right, thank you all. Thank you for listening to me today. Thank you. So next up will be Natalie. Are you okay sharing, Natalie? Uh, yeah, I haven't. Let me, I didn't, I don't have it up. So one second. Let me... uh, you're eating into your time. No, you know, I'm, sorry, I'm you joking. didn't tell me. I I'm to. joking, I'm joking. But everyone uh, ha have your, and Anne, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take care of you, okay? Uh, just... For the record, Jason Wells is on the meeting now. Great. Thanks, Jason. Awesome. Um, and I just want to, while I'm doing this, I just want to just do a shout out. I appreciate all of your work um, to make match happen. I obviously have, I feel, have strong feelings about it and I appreciate <laughs> everything you've done. Okay. Right, I at least have it open now. Let's see if I can share. All right, can you see okay. it? I think I have I'm, a weird version up. But... Yep, it's up and I'm starting the clock. Okay, cool, all right. Okay, I'm gonna start off with our little cover here, Match to the Future. This is our endowment campaign that we're gonna be launching this year. And I just think this is a lot of fun. Um, a little reference to Back to the Future. This was a Mark Lee idea. And I think we're gonna have some fun with that this year. So stay tuned. And then we have updated our mission and vision. So I hope you had a chance to check that out. Um, our organizational goals. Um, Again, that financial stability piece is huge. Um, and then again, that endowment. Um, and then just continuing to do our outreach. And then this year we are venturing in on our five-year strategic plan. Um, our accomplishments. Um, so actually this number is a little larger than the one that was in your original packet. We actually have 870 members um, of our makerspace now. And in 2020, we had 65. And that actually officially makes us the largest makerspace in the state of Colorado, which is exciting. Wow. Yeah. Um, and again, 90 programs a month that does not include our events and other activities. And um, one of the things that we're also particularly proud of is our CDBG grant that we get for workforce training. Um, we have a lot of fun with that. That actually allows us um, kind of individual one-on-one -on -one attention to some of our makerspace members so that they get what they need to launch a new business, to um, set goals and achieve those goals. Um, whereas we have different types of members that use the space in different ways, but we do have that need of folks that, that really need that one-on-one -on -one attention to use our equipment and our spaces. Um, we continue our sustainability efforts. 
And this year, we're going to be losing a lot of our, our eight-year-long time board members. So um, if any of you are interested in switching to the other side, we're, uh, <laughs> we're going to be recruiting. And then this is our 35th anniversary as an organization. So we'll be figuring out uh, creative ways to celebrate that. And then we just like doing this art by the numbers. Um, 2,555 cups of tea brewed. It's probably a little more than that. Um, 15,600 pieces of pottery fired at no expense to our artists. Um, so just, again, some fun numbers to uh, share with the community. Um, our staff goals, um, some of them are ongoing, such as um, Art Walk at the MAC and our key, um, key performance indicators and things like that. We continue to adjust and update those ongoing. And then sort of those interactive art opportunities. Um, you know, we have our button making station. We sometimes have puzzles and things out, but we've realized that people come in off the street and want kind of an immediate opportunity to do something. And so we work with that. And then again, we haven't changed much about how we're gonna utilize the funding. A lot of it is our ongoing efforts, um, staff, livable wages, things like that. Um, and then we've created pie charts this year. We've had some requests from board members to kind of look at things visually as well. And so I'll be asking later if you find this um, better than sort of the traditional format. Um, and so again, some of these other pieces, um, uh, again, tracking demand, remaining uh, relevant, um, especially when it comes to things like tools and equipment for our artists and our non-discrimination. And then again, top four takeaways. Um, I just think the biggest one really, aside from being the largest makerspace in the state, is that um, due to match funding and PPLD support in our apartment rentals, the Manitou Art Center is financially stable for the first time in 25 years. So, and any questions? Natalie, the CDBG grant, do, do the people you serve have to income qualify for that? They do, yes. Uh, Natalie, the words that you had at the end though about being financially stable, mm -hmm. um, I use those exact same words, by the way, in a um, update to um, the Pikes Peak Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, how, I mean, I use the identical words. Yeah, because so, it's exciting. <laughs> it is huge, and I'm and I'm sure I'm sure Peggy will have similar mm -hmm. comments. Yeah, and in, in a short period of time, like Match has really made a difference. Um, huge difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'd be um, great to see your key performance indicators sometime. And, and sure. how yeah, that's handled not at my level. That's handled at the um, management level, but I can definitely get you those. Okay, great. Um, any other Ralph? Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, do you have any specific numbers as to how First Friday did uh, in 2022 compared to other years? Ooh, I don't, but I could easily find that out, Ralph. That's easy. I would just, we'll be getting our financials for last year, um, mid-January. And so I'll be able to look at that and, and tell you exactly. I was also, I was really referring as much to uh, participation numbers of participants. Um, oh, that's interesting. Not... Yeah, I don't know the answer to that because I feel like um, we actually had fewer people coming to the live music than we did the year before because I do feel like there was this really need to come together as a community and see one another in 2021 that was not there as much last year. And so it actually might be fewer numbers than the year before. I'll have to find that out. I, I think there was also a lot more rain on Fridays this year. I mean, in 2022. <laughs> That's not wrong. <laughs> a lot more rain. A lot more rain. Yeah. True. Any other questions for Natalie? All right. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you, Natalie. Yeah. Uh, Peggy, do you need me to present for you or? Um, no, okay. um, everything, I had it on the computer up at the castle, but I couldn't get the camera to work, so I ended up having to come to the house and use an tennis computer, so I'm just going to pretty much read to you what I have. Um, as you all are aware, we did use last year's match grant 
to do a complete renovation of our great hall. It is the largest room in the castle. It was a huge project and the longest one that I have worked on. Last year's entire grant was spent on this project, plus another 31,000 of castle funds and between 50 and 70,000 in work that we did ourselves and did not have to contract out. And I can say that John Nichols was very instrumental in helping do that. The total project should have cost between 125 and 150, and we spent uh, 78,000 on it. This problem exemplifies the can-do attitude that the Manitou Springs Historical Society of Miramont Castle possesses. Because a large amount of the funds came from the grant, we would like to hold an open house and invite anyone in town who would like to come and show them what their faith in us has accomplished. We had hoped to do it before Christmas, but the end of the year came faster than we wanted. We have some amazing pictures of how the castle was constructed and all the artifacts that were discovered buried in the walls. This includes a mummified squirrel that we no. gave an honorable burial in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> we will provide food and drink for as long as it lasts, but the castle will be open for all to see. We hope to do this in late February or early March, since we need time to get the word out. As soon as we set a date, I will let the match board know, and hopefully all of you will be able to attend, since you are such an integral part of all of this. This year's grant is going, this year, not last, is going to be sent, spent on not so a hands-on project. The hands are a little tired right now. <laughs> we are wanting to replicate the keyhole windows on the west end of the Great Hall to fill the empty windows on the east end. They had once been exterior windows and now look odd as empty. We are going to try to make the gardens easier to walk around by improving the stairway to Montcalm. Any work we do in the office will be an improvement for those of us who have to work over there. The lighting is horrible at best. Windows to the outside world would be incredible. For the castle having so many south facing windows, the office has none. There were a couple of accomplishments that I've got to mention in the grant. And one is that we now replace the Corel dishes in the tea room and third floor with China, actual China. We also received the Visit Colorado Springs 2022 Tourism Star Award for community outreach. This is for Mercy at Miramont in which we help families in need at Christmas. Um, we had a decent year in 2020. It was nothing compare, to compare to 21. I am going cautiously into 23, hoping there is not a recession, but no matter what, we will be ready for whatever happens. And Thank you, you Peggy. All, and That's, there was a question on me not including the match money in our budget and not knowing you know, what it would be. Uh, that was why it wasn't there. Usually when I get the check, I deposit it into our savings account. And from there, I transfer it over when we write the larger checks for the renovation. But all of the money goes to renovation. Right. So are there any questions? Well, first of all, Peggy, I think that would be a brilliant idea to invite the community in because um, I think it was that actually sort of Nancy's been up there a couple of times. And she she has it, been, yes. She said it's just amazing. Um, yeah. So I think that'd be really cool. Well, I had pictures. I had a lot of pictures to show you from the old Great Hall to the new, and it, you you just can't imagine the difference. Yeah, yeah. Any any questions for uh, Peggy? I don't have a question, but I just have to say I, I I walk through there a couple times a day on my route downtown, and every time I've gone through, Peggy's hands have been dirty, <laughs> <laughs> and my face and a sundry other and, parts and of my anatomy. <laughs> any other questions here? Okay, and I think that 
you know, um, these three presentations really had everything we needed in them, but I still think it's it's a good opportunity for each of the organizations to just speak to what they think is important. So thank you uh, all for coming. And with that, I forgot to set the timer um, on you, Peggy. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so you're good. Um, so I think next is going to be uh, Mary for the uh, Carnegie building. So you want to go ahead and share Mary and come off uh, mute. Bear, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. I'm off you go. To get my presentation to go. There we go. Oh, odd. Uh, can you see the presentation or do you see all the yep. faces? Here? No, it's there. It's there. Okay. All right. So I'm Mary Popemacher and I'm, I'm a member of the Preserve and Renew our Carnegie Library Task Force and presenting on um, the request, the application for funds, match funds this year for the city building. Um, I'm in a, it's a, the presentation, as you see, this is the, our, our historic building uh, picture of, um, I should have included pictures of the design, but I did not. I'm going to um, go forward through the mission and the organizational goals and accomplishments before last year and just go yeah. to the side by side of um, what we presented as objectives for 2022 and what we accomplished. And just mention that we really achieved these um, objectives with the exception we made human hunger strides. We, this is a collaborative team of the city working with the Pikes Peak Library District, working with Ratio Architects, working with um, the task force, working with um, city, uh, city um, um, the visitors, uh, why am I struggling here? Um, our, our um, the visitor center, what is it called? <laughs> the, um, oh, chamber? anyway. The Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, thank you, the chamber. Um, anyway, we've made huge, great strides and the design is incredible and awesome. And the public process that was used to achieve it was worked just as it was supposed to. Um, so the only thing we didn't really accomplish this year, we thought we would have uh, city council approval by the end of December. Right now that has moved out to, um, there's a couple of steps remaining. The target is to have a presentation to uh, planning commission in February and city council in March. So ratio architects are planning to submit for a building permit on the 1st of April. That's their hard deadline that they have. Um, so the objectives for next year, are kind of a continuation on the theme um, to finish the actual approvals um, and get the deliverables from ratio of the full design and start going through the permitting process to get um, city and regional uh, permit approval. Um, and begin uh, develop finalizing and executing the, the financial plan as well. So the match funding is to be used for, right now the current plan is to use the match funding to secure a loan for Becca Davis to use those to help the city get a loan, to help with the building construction. Um, and I know there's not a, 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 an ability to do an ongoing commitment from, from the match board, um, but the idea is that the ongoing, there would be an ongoing commitment that would help pay for this loan. Um, <clears throat> the construction cost estimate is at 3.5 million. In order to start construction, the city needs to have 80% um, of that secured. So that's 2.8 million. Um, since we're very close to uh, having approval of the project, um, while the match board um, gave guidance that said expect 80 90 percent of what you got in 2022 and in 2022 for the Carnegie Library the city received $102,735 the idea would be to um, you know 80 to 90 percent fine but as much as the match board could front end load um, funding to the Carnegie the better it would be in order to get to get the project rolling and going and make it to the 80 percent and allow construction to start. Once construction starts, the idea would be this would take about a year, um, according to the architect, and the city already through many private donations, including a bequest, plus the match funds received so far, plus the $500,000 city commitment. <clears throat> the city currently has, you know, my estimate based on numbers I've received, um, which are slightly dated, um, although there has been just two new contributions is 
probably about a million dollars is what they have right now. So um, the three-year organizational outlook, however, is excellent, right? To finish all this, get the permitting, break the ground, build the building, have the ribbon cutting for the final, and then have a grand reopening of our Carnegie Library. Um, and finally have the facility uh, that, and in fact, a park as well, that will be ADA accessible um, and serves the purpose of the, of the library. So not only will we have a library that anybody can get to, but also we'll have a ADA accessible portion of the park with the, with the outdoor um, patio that's on top of the roof of the extension, the expansion piece. Um, and so the idea will be that we'll have this beautiful, beautiful um, building that really celebrates the historical building and is a beautiful beacon of, of learning for, for not just our community, but the region as well. And that's it. Any okay. questions? Um, I've got one, but I'm gonna give others a chance first. Okay. Any questions for Mary? Mary, what is the status of your capital campaign? I haven't seen any publicity, requests for donations. When is that? Coming. The city, the city is not going to launch a capital campaign until after final approval, and final approval has not yet occurred. They oh, are okay. planning to hire a capital campaign manager, however. So it, in January of 2022, so the, the city had hired a capital campaign consultant, um, Kimberly Sherwood, and Kimberly and I presented in January of 2022 on a financial plan and a capital plan. Um, but that's all been sort of shelved until uh, there is a final approval on the project. Okay. Would, would our funding be, or was it city funding that was you would be used for the campaign manager? Uh, so right now, the money that's being used, uh, you know, matches the match dollars are in the budget, is my understanding. Um, the money that's been used so far to pay for things like the architect and and you know the consultants, et cetera. Um, some of the engineering things, the survey, all of that stuff has been coming out of the money that's already in there, which is primarily the Jane's bequest that was made uh, quite some time ago. <clears throat> and there's been multiple additional donations, community donations just from people who have been wanting to uh, see this go forward, but there hasn't been a push to um, ask for funds because there has to be, according to the capital campaign consultant, you really need to have the bulk of the money secured before you launch the cap the public part of the capital campaign. And that's usually around 80%, which is also the amount of money that's needed to actually break ground. So, so I think so. that kind of leads to the question I've got then, which is to get to the 80%, you need another 1.8 million. Um, yeah. I'm assuming that your capital plan that you referenced earlier at least has some kind of of bucketing for where that 1.8 comes from, grants, yeah, so, you know, whatever. Yes, and so um, a large part of that was some grants. Um, so the there are things like there's uh, DOLA is an organization and the State Historic Fund are organizations that provide grants. Um, there's been there's several other uh, local organizations that are you know are targeted. But um, the city applied for a state historic fund grant in December at, or in last year and was turned down and was told that they were premature. They really need to have um, final approved plans. Yes, they need to be yes. shovel ready, actually, so yeah. is what I'd recently heard. I, I don't have that confirmed, but that's what I'd heard from, um, from a member of the city. So let's assume um, approval happens in March. Do you have a timeline for when you would have you'd like to have, have the funding available? Is it a year, eighteen so we, months? Yeah. So we we had a timeline available, which was predicated upon some grants, and those grants are not going forward now. Um, so the the timeline was to start late late summer of this year, um, and be in in a year. Um, but that probably will no longer hold unless yeah. the city decides to delve into their um, it's very substantial reserves that they have right now. Okay, I got you. All right, thank yeah. you. Anything else for Mary? Okay, thank you for okay. the opportunity. Thanks, Mary. Um, and I'm going to share the Hiawatha Gardens, okay? Great, thank you.
um it should be there Appreciate oh, hang on. That. let me just just do a there you a go clock yeah reset okay okay Ann Nichols with the Hiawatha Gardens task force number three and you can actually scroll down to our 2022 accomplishments because I think that's sort of the meat of this presentation we did uh we had hired BVH we the architect to do the design for the restoration or rehabilitation of the dance hall and the mobility hub, which includes the restrooms. We started with the requirement that they provide three options for preliminary design, and then we would take that to the community. We did that last in 2022 and then came back to the community with what we considered to be the preferred option for both the location and size of the restrooms, the site layout, and roughly what would be in the historic dance hall once it was restored. So, and which included kind of at the last minute, the concept of putting a parking office either in Hiawatha Gardens or in the adjacent restroom building. At that point, the city had started negotiating to buy the Chase Bank building and wanted us to hold up on anything further, given the probability that there might be some interconnection between what would be in the Chase Bank building and the layout use and function of Hiawatha Gardens. So for the last basically six months of 2022, we didn't do much. We had gone to council in July and they approved or they gave us a head nod on the preliminary plan. And we did some survey work and some geotech work, but basically we were kind of stuck in place until the city consummated the purchase of the Chase Bank building. <clears throat> and we have just now restarted looking at how that will integrate into Hiawatha Gardens and what minimal, and I think there'll be pretty minimal tweaks we'll need to make because of the integration of that piece of property into the plan. We did in, uh, through a process that's described by code, we got Hiawatha Gardens re-included in the historic district, which was one of our main goals. And that happened in May, the Historic Preservation Commission recommended that and council approved it. So you could flip the next page, I think, yep. Neil. And Sorry. I think that covers the, yeah, the going into the his, historic district. So those were, and we did some, uh, obviously keep maintaining the building. We added some fencing around the building. We, with Crane's help, we got the mural on the building, which I think helped the appearance quite a little. So for now that we are able to restart again in 2023, what we see as our objectives is we have um, actually, we took the time we had in 2022 to ne negotiate and execute contracts with BVH for what we call our phase two final design. And they're two separate contracts because we need to keep the funds separate from what match provides for the historic dance hall and the source of funding for the restrooms and the mobility hub, which is principally PPRTA funding. So what we intend to do in 2023 is go through to final design, which will also include community outreach and input when we get to that final design for the, the look exteriorly of the historic dance hall and the interior function and then the size, location, and look of the restroom and the mobility structures. Because this piece of property is now back in the historic district, anything that goes on the site, not just the historic dance hall, has to be run through HPC and meet their historic compatibility guidelines. So we would also um, after we go through final design, then we would go to construction drawings, which is a fairly expensive process, and start identifying how to fundraising options. And uh, again, at some point, we would go back to HPC to get 
final approval or approval on the exterior and interior design of the dance hall and the associated structures. So our use of funds for the match funds for 2023, and you could scroll down one more, would basically be to cover the phase two BVH costs for just the historic dance hall. Um, probably we would hope a match for a state uh, historic fund grant, building up a, 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 some funds that we could use in addition to the grant for construction of the buildings on the site, which would we also have $250,000 that was allocated by the city. So we have that available, but um, would need additional monies for that. So our request for match funds, and that's on the next slide, is that whatever ends up being allocated to the city projects and tier one's funds that we get approximately half of that. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Anne. Um, any questions for Anne? Anne, you mentioned the historic preservation uh, match funds. Do you know what a percentage they ask for in that grant? I'm told 25%. We've assumed the 625, I think, that shows on that last slide is a 25% match for a $250,000 grant. Okay, thank you. And okay, uh, a few of Ralph. I, I had also heard now, this is obviously temporary, but I'd heard of plans for possibly a second mural on the north side of the building? Is that probably uh, in the works? We've heard that as well. I think Crane would take that forward, but yes, we would be amenable to, for that to occur, yes. That would be funded through a Crane request though. Right, right. It's not money yeah. that we would have right. to come up okay. with, but we're very uh, positive in that regard. We think that would be a good addition. Um, uh, off you go, Kinsey. I'm just wondering if you have a timeline or goal for that renovation. I know at this point we're still in the coming up with the plans phase, but, but right. do you have a, like a five-year plan? Well, what our architect in their phase two concept suggested that, <coughs> excuse me, that it would take them two to three months to get through the final design. So they were looking at probably April of this year. And I think that's optimistic because we have still been slowed down a little with trying to figure out how to integrate the Chase Bank building. But presuming that we got the final design, got through community input with that, went to the HPC, went to council, then I think we would be in the place where we would be doing construction drawings probably late summer and wouldn't be ready to go out to bid assuming we had identified funding sources wouldn't be able to go out to bid till late in the year so 20, and, 20, and i don't have a good sense of the length of time for the construction really i ha i don't Thank i you. doubt if it's over a year but i just don't have that information and would the um, with the work that was done this year was there a budgetary estimate for for the dance hall portion for the con the rehabilitation? Yeah, <laughs> we had um, other than kind of like rule of thumb numbers that we would get from our consult our BV BVH our architectural consultant. We have not gotten to the point, at least in my view where we have enough detail to actually get a realistic estimate of cost. So we have been avoiding, actually, because we don't think we have good numbers, putting so, a cost estimate out. So in terms of sources of funding, are you primarily focused on history of Colorado and the city, or are there other realistic vehicles for funding for right. the actual work 
I think though those would be the two main sources, okay. but um, based on the experience, and I'm on the Adaman Club, and we we raised like a million dollars for our yeah. anniversary. I want to talk to you. There there are opportunities through foundations and donors out there to get into get additional funding, and I yeah. think we would pursue those. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Anne. Any other questions? Thanks for your time. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. It. Um, so, uh, Carrie, Natalie, Peggy, Mary, Anne, thank you. <laughs> I'm usually bad on names, but I uh, did a good job then. Um, yeah. So, you are welcome to hang up or stay on, but we're going to move on to the rest of the agenda now. So, thank you guys. Uh, thank just you. as a, a timeline, whatever we do, we'll go to the first week of March city council meeting for recommendation and then city council would approve it at their first regular meeting in March which I think is the second week so that gives you an idea of timeline okay thank Thanks you very guys much. appreciate it thank you all right bye-bye all right so um Let's uh, go to approval of the October 27th minutes, please. Were there any, um, uh, Kinsey, have you, have, you, have your hand up? I was just gonna move to approve, but if you're gonna ask if people had comments. I yeah, I was gonna say if there were any edits that people had seen, obviously, Ren, you won't be voting on this. Um, I won't either, okay. I wasn't there. Um, so, uh, Kinsey's moving to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Jason, were you on, on that call? Yep. Yeah. Aye. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, that would be... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I was in, in voting in favor. Okay, so that's five of us, I think, right? Okay, um, any city uh, council or support staff updates that are, are pertinent? Becca, you might update when you expect to have the final revenue numbers. You on mute, there you go. Okay, uh, final revenue numbers. I believe should come in February, around February 10th, is what so, I want to say. So we will have those for our board meeting in February, okay? That is so we'll, we'll know how much money it is, how much goes to tier one, and how much goes to tier two. Um, so we'll have that information at that time. Oh, uh, also, quick question. Ren, on my agenda, down at the bottom, your last name has, it's spelled A-L-M-I-T-R-A. -A, but when I look at the label on your screen, I don't see an L. Have we, did we spell it wrong on our agendas? Nope, I spelled it wrong. You're oh. good. <laughs> Thank you good. for that. I was like, no. I didn't, okay, good. I, I was just that. panicking. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, was there anything you needed to talk about? No, I don't have any updates. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about uh, expectations for next week. Uh, and I'm just going to bring up the app. Um, so just bear with me a second here. There we go. Uh, we'll go back into the Zoom window. Share. And what is it I'm sharing this? So if we take a look at the, third, oh, it's 35 applications now. And we kind of, you know, what we've talked about is next week we'll be focused on the top 10, 12, whatever that right number is, um, amounts that are being asked for, it's gonna be, they will be on the call and it will be questions only. We're not asking them 
to present. So it's really important that we've all read the applications. And I, I'll send a list on Saturday of what that final list is, because our deadline is Friday night. So read them and have questions that you want to ask that gives you confidence when you're doing your sort of a rating that this project is, you know, is going to happen, is well thought out and so forth. Um, I can tell you most of the questions I've got tend to be budget driven as opposed to the actual scope of the work, but, that, but that's just me. I'm a, a money guy. Um, but, you know, it's really important that you read the list that, which I send out on Saturday and have any questions sort of written down that you want to ask so you understand more clearly what it is that they're trying to do. Um, so if we were to say it's just these 35 apps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we would probably cut off around the $5,000 mark. However, there's still $21,000 of draft applications out there. Um, and I, I actually think there may be one or two which aren't even in draft yet. Um, because I know that we don't have the application from Crane, and I would have expected that to be <laughs> 10, 15,000 on its own. Um, but anyway, uh, but, but, but that kind of uh, uh, gives you an, an idea, you know, it's going to be most of these higher dollar items. Neil? Yep. Yeah. I just want to make sure this, I have this right. So we should be looking at all the grants over $5,000 for next week. Well, I will send a list, Nancy, on Saturday. Okay. Because I, I actually don't know what the cut line is yet. Okay. But it, if we were doing the cut line right now, I think it would be 5000 Okay. And those people are going to be, they're going to be notified by next Thursday? They already are being notified when they submit their application. Okay. Uh, Kinsey, is that right? That's right. Well, a message appears on the application form for anyone who has more than $5,000 in their requested amount. Um, I think, Jason, were you trying to ask a question? No, it wasn't me. Okay, I thought I I heard your 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 voice. So, uh, are we clear on 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 next week? Okay. So, um, I guess I've kind of talked about what the preliminary list of applications may be. Um, it may be a good time just to comment. There's there's one application here, the air quality ozone, which um, can I ask it, how many people have read that application? Or maybe I should say, who has not? Uh, Jason, Jason here. I have not. Okay. Has everyone else looked at it? I, Brian has. I have not. Okay. Well, five of us have then. Um, I think there's a question that that's eligible because it kind of it moves kind of outside of that arts, culture, history. Um, um, yeah, window. Um, so, uh, uh, Kinsey? I was just going to say, agree. I, I put in the comments on mine that it seemed like it was more of a bid for work than it was a grant application, just in yeah. the tone and what they were offering. So, um, 
at this point, I mean, I, I think Nancy, I've heard from you. Ralph, I've heard from you. Kinsey, I've heard from you. Um, Marcus, did you have a viewpoint? Yeah, it, it seemed it seemed odd. I was trying to wrap my head around like how I where I would be even be using it or my neighbors or someone. I just yeah, no, and, and so um I know the applicant. Um his wife bakes bakes my bread. Uh you know, Christina. Um and he, 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 his application was done focusing on the creativity and he perfectly understands that this is not really inside the match your scope. So I think uh, we should disregard the application because it's not eligible. I think that's the only one I really have seen that I would call as being ineligible based on scope. Were there any others? Uh, Kinsey, give your hand up. Yes, I, I thought perhaps the Maori, not the small mini grant for a single class, but for the week long intensive, it didn't have any mention of having a pass through, like having that hosted at Mac or something. And, and without that, I wondered if it was actually even a, yeah, that workshop, the, the one you're highlighting now. It didn't yeah. mention an organization the hacker workshop. associated with it on that one. So I wondered if it was in fact also not eligible. Yeah, so there's a number of applications which are actually missing attachments. Mm. Um, so I, I'm focusing here purely on scope of the project that falls outside the boundary of arts, culture, history. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I saw that there, and, and there's quite a few emails that have come in with attachments. And I'm going to be talking about it because I, I, I'm i a, a wee bit lost at this point on as to where we are with all, all the necessary attachments. I know, I think that was one that we got an email with a pass through agreement. Okay. Okay, as an example. But so I, as far as I know, it's just the hacker one that I'm um, sorry not the hacker one the ozone one that we would exclude on the basis of it's not really fitting in arts culture history is that okay guys okay so i'm going to stop sharing that no i'm not so let's talk about how we want to handle mini grants and i sent it an an email uh, in our um, uh, our procedures, we do mini grants on a simple yes or no, and it needs five of us to be a yes for it to be approved. So if you're a yes, rate it eight stars. If you're a no, rate it one star, and that will be. A uh, yes, no. Is that clear for everyone? So, as an example, you, you can see what I did on on the Mary weaving one. It's it's eight 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 eight. Um. So that's how we want to handle that. Uh, and then, of course. For all the others, you just rate it by the applicable stars. That's appropriate. Now, if you have a situation where you have a conflict of interest, like I do on this dish detergent project, I'm not going to rate that at all because I have a conflict of interest. I'm a co-applicant on that one. Can I ask that um, question about another application, Neil? Yeah, please. The Miramont Castle one, um, uh, I think it was towards the bottom. Um, am I correct that there was one called Miramont? Uh, I don't think so. Yes. Yes, so it's about $12,000. Yeah. 
You know what? That one was actually removed. Unless they resubmitted it, there was a whole email chain about. That was actually City Hall. That was City Hall needing a new stove. No, this it said something else. Scroll to the towards the top. I think you. I think it got moved. Is Um, it Miramont Castle Architecture Interpretive website? Oh wow! I didn't even see that. That would that, that would just appear. So just curious how we, I haven't looked at it yet, but how we um, weigh that with the proposal that we um, So our approach has been any tier one is not able to apply for a tier two um, grant. Okay. Um, where's this going to be? It's uh, a website. Oh, that's a tough one. I I don't rem- I I actually I vaguely remember that discussion. Um, Neil, and what was the r- rationale for that? Because the tier ones are already getting a bunch of money, and we wanted to prioritize it going to. But but this this is not going towards right. Um, building this is a uh this actually i think would be permissible within our rules really i think so would that mean that if the historical society wanted to make an archive website they could say that that was because it's a website not a part of their location it seems kind of nitpicky yeah yeah um so again, I think I think it's where this is going to be hosted may come into this also. It's going to be on Miramont Castle's website. The answer is I don't really know, Ren. Is it hang on, who, who's asking this question? Yeah, that Ren? was yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah. Um I I don't know. I, I think we all need some time to think about it. And we'll inquire of Dave next week because he'll be he has to come and present. I, yeah, and I think to me the the important thing is is that it's it's for I mean it's for a lot of people but visitors so that visitors to Miramont and around here looks you know it's not a closed it's not just archives that you have to you know you're probably not going to dig into unless you're a, a visitor doing some research, but that it's accessible to the public. Yeah, the more I look at this, the more it comes into question in my mind, Nancy. This is open with a QR code code on site. Uh-huh. Um, it, it, I think I think it crosses that sort of of line between a tier one funding. You know, Miramont, the Heritage Center, and the Mac. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I'll read it. So, Ren, thank you for pointing. I, I, I think this just actually popped up. Um, and I, I think we'll just have to talk about about this next week. Okay. It it hits me wrong. I I I just feel like I I thought it was fairly established that. Uh, tier one recipients, the tier one money was for them and the tier two money was for everybody else. Yeah, they, the tier one shouldn't really directly benefit. It seems like it would be taking taking funds away, quite likely, from, you know, Someone smaller else, yeah. applicants who uh, that's what tier right. two is for. Okay. Well, we'll we'll have to discuss this next week. I think Dave may answer some of our questions about what he's really trying to do. But um, yeah, it, it it feels to me like it crosses a line. Well, and and it's there's no reason why Peggy couldn't ask for you know in in their application for next year if it was important to them, ask for that as being part of their match money, tier one yeah. match money. 
yeah oh. and i don't i don't know this is uh is dave a member of the board i, d I don't think he is i don't think he is it's a lot of work um so anyway um that's a great question <laughs> rem but yeah we had discussed previously that the tier two was really for two tier two tier tier two beneficiaries okay thank you all right um so whilst we're on this i've got one more thing to share and i think marcus you'd asked me about this um i have been keeping track of who has not submitted a project completion report and this is a requirement to be eligible for a grant this year the only ones which i have seen a conflict with is becca and i i know she has it she just hasn't submitted it yet and I, I think there's an application from Rebecca Allen um, in, in the, um, can it, anyone see that if she has an application in? I feel like I can confirm that I read a, a second mindfulness yeah. in your painting application. So I think you've heard me say that, you know, we have sent three emails telling people to get these in, but I also don't want to be a twit. Um, does someone want to contact Rebecca and tell her if she does, she's got to get a project completion report in by tomorrow at five o'clock or she will not be e eligible for a grant. It's only two hundred and fifty and fifty dollars that she asked for, but but the rules are being very clear. We need a project completion report. And it, and did we say a date? Yes, it was January sixth. Okay. It, it's the same as the application deadline, okay. and you know the, the last email went out two weeks before Christmas. Now, none of these others have submitted applications yet. Um, but, you know, I. Um, yeah, I, I, Neil. Yes. If you if you have her contact number, I can call her tomorrow. Well, you you can get it from the application for this okay. year and, make and just just tell her. To, that to be eligible for her application, she needs to submit last year's project completion report. And, and the form is on our website. Okay. The old and if, website, not the new one. What's that? The, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's the one on our website. That's the one that, that we are using for last year's applications. Yeah that populates our Google Drive. Um, if, if any of these others send an application and no form, I, I'll contact them. But, um, you know, I, I do not have a lot of, of patience for people just ignoring stuff like this. But um, I, 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 I want to balance my lack of patience with not being too much of a twit. Um, so, you know, we'll give them one more chance, but five o'clock Friday is the deadline. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Marcus. Neil, I know um, this isn't helpful right now. I'm, I've am i been trying to take notes through the process, just of things to think about for next year. Um, and again, I know this isn't relevant for this year, but it might be worth separating those dates, the report due date and the application date um, for a few different reasons, but we can talk about it next year. And yeah, because actually, originally we did have them separated, but then we merged it. 
Okay. okay. Because they thought it would it, it would be less confusing. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Understood. But, but we will in in April have a a review of okay. this kind of process and what we want to change, particularly with the website interaction. Um, so by all means, keep those on your back burner, Ren. Okay. 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 And this uh, this list will go on. This will. <clears throat> Right, it will go on from year to year. In yeah, purpose. this is this is. If you don't uh, uh, put in a, a report, you're ineligible for two years minimum. Right. So you know, and and that's being clearly stated as well. As as we have this here, um, Ralph knows about this. I've been talking to sort of, of Becca uh, about the importance I felt, we felt as a board that we gave council a little bit more of a taste of what happened th th this year. So I pulled this all from last year's matrix. And with Becca, we came up with a categorization so, for example, I, I can just look at um, exhibition installations and get a view of those. But we've also added from the project completion report the number of participants and thus a dollars per participant. Now, on the exhibition, that's a bit weird because that's almost infinite because it's a public kind of thing. But it, it, if we look at, say, classes, this gives you an idea of how much per person is being spent. And, and Ren, to your point, I think we want to put a little bit more in maybe into the application next year, expected number of participants, so we can calculate this. Because I, I think this is a pretty important metric. It's really a return on dollars invested. And it could well be a deciding factor between do we fund this grant or do we fund this grant? But um, I just wanted to sh show that to you. And Michelle, we would bring a summary of this to the council works session in March. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, do I want to save this? No. Um, I've stopped sharing now. So conflict of interest. Um, on Saturday, we'll have the final list of applications. So we're going to want to see if we have any additional conflicts of interest. So you heard from me, I definitely have one because I'm a co-applicant. So we're going to want to update our conflicts of interest for the tier two applications. And what that means is you don't vote. You don't rate those particular applications. Um, um, and Ralph, you'll probably have Crane, you're still yes. on the board at Crane, aren't you? I'm, I'm the chair of the board. Yeah, I, I thought so. Um, I'm not really aware of too many other conflicts, but you know, we'll at least list out if you think it's a conflict and then as a board, we'll determine if it's a conflict or not, okay? Um, but you know, clearly as a co-applicant, that's a conflict of interest. Um, as being on the board of the applicant entity, that's a conflict of interest. But um, some of these are others, um, it, it may not be uh, as much, but we'll do that with the final list that comes out this weekend. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Um, I was going to ask, um, we're getting a few emails which have additional attachments. Ralph, 
you and I were going to do a kind of a, a joint thing where we see if we've got everything. Can I ask you to track what's coming in by email? Okay. Because I'm, it's it's a bit much for me to handle that. And then you and I will determine what the gaps are after that. Are, are we getting these because someone is unable to upload after they've submitted? Yes. Their... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cindy? I think at least for one of them, we're also getting them because they the requested amount was less than 750. So it was a mini grant and we don't ask the pass through or the upload questions for mini grants. So we kind of have this place where they need a attachment kind of, but the form didn't give them one. So this okay. is something we'll need to discuss as for how we want that business logic handled so we can update the code in the future yeah. or at least some of them. Okay. So I don't think it's a vast, a vast number, but but there are, are going to be a few gaps um, that we want to just make sure get addressed at some point. So, okay. So, so Kenzie, if we have something that's been sent by an email, are we able to attach them to an application from the board member access or not? Or do we need to send it to you? There is there is no existing way. And even if you were to send it to me, I, I'm not sure I have a way to attach yeah. a file to someone else's application. Um, we could, for any of them that are over that 750 amount, we could. I think it's okay because because these are coming in to the match board email address and Becca is forwarding them to all of us. Right. I just need someone to be keeping a record of what's coming in by email. We've all got access to it. Right. And most of them are things like the the MOU. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's more requirements details and not not related to budget or specifics that have already been submitted exactly but but we we have to have the m I, I, the I, I, mou in order for them to get the check to be issued as an example so i i just asking you to keep track of what comes in by email all right all right because I because i i can't okay okay all right Thank you. Then at our, our last meeting, um, which I think there was four of us at or five, the the slate of, of board member officers for 2023 that will vote on in our March 23rd board meeting was Ralph as chair, me as vice chair, and Kinsey as secretary. Is that right? Is that is that what, what we agreed? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, I and because Nancy, you weren't there. Um, I forget it. I don't think Jason was either. Uh, did either of you have a particular interest in taking a, a, an officer role? I think I know the answer. I think that's <laughs> I, I was there, Nancy. I didn't. <laughs> If I were, I, if I, I were, believe I was in that meeting. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. So those will be uh, we'll, we'll vote on those in in March, and and the reason is we want to keep the existing um, sort of of structure till we're through this year's grant round. That's that's the rationale. Okay. And Neil, Jason here. Just just one question for clarification sake. Um, is Ren a, a regular board member? Because the yes. October 27th, okay, the October 27th minutes reflect that she was seeking an alternate position. So, yeah, no, um, we 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 twisted her arm. Okay, good. Well, I mean, good for everyone else, but me who's just the, still the lonely alternate. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ren. Okay. 
and it, that was all we had on the agenda. It's always good to see if we've missed out anything. Any comments? I just want to say I sure do love the new website. <laughs> it is just, oh man, such a joy. It is, isn't it? Oh. Um, and it's it's a lot Having easier. Having done it for two years without, you know, it's I, it's like night and day. Yeah, yeah. I um, have. <laughs> well, think of how hard it was making all those frigging copies. Oh my gosh. The I'm copies putting them in binders. Keeping your ratings separate from it was this is just like a dream compared to that. And I'm sure it is for Becca and everybody who copied stuff. And oh my gosh, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I'm so uh, pleased. And feel <laughs> free to keep notes as for like future things that could make it even better. And I can I can see what I can sneak in versus what needs to be put on an official like yeah. out thing. But I, I am prepared to That's keep it better for you all. <laughs> um uh, Kinsey, would you be able to on Saturday or Sunday send me an extract of all all the projects and the applicant names and the amounts? It would save me having to type it up because th that would be what I send to the board that will show these will be the projects we review next week. Okay. Anything else, guys? Are we still thinking of um, an in-person meeting in March, was it? Um, I think it was the February one. February one. Okay. Thank you, Ren. Someone needs to learn how to operate the equipment. Do we have a volunteer? <laughs> uh, I've got... I I got a, I had my notes saying that it, the January twenty sixth was going to be uh, in Memorial Hall and then no in, no no not okay no, no because when we have when we have that that number of people it's a lot more efficient to to switch between in this kind of mode than in but but we were going to do for a February meeting in okay, person February. Or okay. hybrid, hybrid actually. Right. Good. Hybrid, I, I won't be but, able to come in person, but I'll right. do my best to. But but we we need someone who knows how to operate the equipment um, with some confidence because, um, you know, that, that, that can, can be a challenge, I know, judging by city council meetings. Because it, it's the same tech technology, is, isn't it, Becca? Yes, it's the same exact technology. Uh, I was going to have Judy um, show it to me and take notes, but I would really like a board member also there with me because if if uh, two heads are always better than one. I so, can help with that, Becca. I'm Got it. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah, I've done some of that. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Okay, Thank so you, Ren. Uh, I'll find out your availability. Okay, but this won't be until February. See, I was thinking January 26th and then also the February. No, no, just no. February. Just okay. February. So I'll look into your uh, availability in February, probably the third week in February, so that it'll still be fairly fresh in our minds for the meeting in, in the fourth week. If that sounds okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. No. <laughs> I I did not want that responsibility. I, I did not want to be technical support. Uh, I appreciate that. But you've already provided technical support when you come to the when you've come to the city council work sessions before with uh well that's the easy bit, that that's because it's just operating a projector and stuff. Um, okay. Okay. Anything else, guys? Just, uh, I just want to keep, and I guess we'll do this in our March meeting, but I, I want to keep thinking about a calendar, a master calendar. I've just noticed in reading the grants that very, very few of them give a specific date, but I was thinking, you know, when they do a give, give a specific date, it would be nice to plug them in somewhere. Yeah, 
and I, I think we need to engage with Beck on that because we were going to use or adopt the match Facebook page uh, um, as a way for uh, applicants to tag their events into. Um, uh, yes, Kinsey. I was just going to also remind you all that I built out a calendar in the website that's just ready to be used, whether we want to hard code dates. If we if someone in the board wanted to make a list oh. once we finished voting, I could plug them in or in the future we could make it automatic so that we do ask in the application if they have a date. And if they do, it could just just whoosh be there. So, yeah, that's, that's right. Way. Another miracle. Yeah, it, it might be kind of nice to have something on a web page. Yeah. Okay. It's 726. I think we got done with that pretty quickly, which is good. So thank you all. Bear in mind next week. Um, you know, I, I'm expecting a lot more questions. As I said, most of my questions are kind of budget related, things I'm not comfortable with. But each of us has our own way we look at things. Uh, and we'll pick up on discussing the Miramont application. Uh, probably we'll have, we'll do that after we've done all the uh, Q&A. Because uh, um, I think we need a chance to really think about that a bit. Okay. And there may be uh, others. I don't know. Uh, Kinsey. I was just wondering, do we have a date for when we're going to discuss the tier one? Does we're hoping to do that in, in February as well. Okay. Um, so once we know what the dollars are, mm -hmm. we'll do our complete recommendation at the February board meeting. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I really think we want to have what the dollars are. It just makes it a bit more tangible. We could do percentages now, I suppose, but I'd rather just say, let's get the dollars and go from there. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you. Sounds good. See you uh, next week. All right. Thank Sounds you. Good, good week, y'all. Cheers. Bye bye. bye.